everybody go ahead and stand up. Amen. Who's ready to worship? Amen. Amen. Wait 
comforter, counselor here. Holy Spirit, sent from heaven, the God. Spirit always, the leader and guider of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the head of the church. The Holy Ghost is the guide of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And reconciliation to the Father is the purpose of the church. Amen. Glory to God. Well, turn around and greet someone and say, it's good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Yeah, actually in person. Isn't it good to be in person? Amen. Instead of, um, y'all didn't say anything. Well, that daylight saving time thing got you, huh? Hallelujah. Just think you'll get to go back and get that hour back in November. That really helped y'all feel good, didn't it? Yeah, I don't like it either. Somebody told me this morning they're, planning, they're, they're trying to pass a bill to make it permanent. I'm like, uh, uh, I knew we should have elected them folks. That they're just... They're, yeah, they, they always try to do it. They, you know, I remember back in Reagan, we, we had it for like two or three years. Uh, they kept it daylight saving time all the time because of, um, 
the energy crisis back in the early 80s. Anybody remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I was like, uh, anyway. Huh? Yo, okay. All right. Yeah, that ain't got no, energy crisis has nothing to do with the energy crisis. We, we'll, you, you create crisis, and you can create a crisis, hallelujah, through stupid policies. But anyway, I'll, I'll start right there and stay out the, I'll stay out the political soapbox. Yeah. Dumb and dumber. Hallelujah. If you need an offering envelope, we can take it we'll receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Envelope, raise your hand. Uh, if you're writing giving cash or giving, um, I'm sorry, you're not giving cash. If you're giving through cash app or through PayPal, um, you can go ahead and get your offerings ready for uh, giving that way. And praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, we are, we are, uh, we are actively in search of a place. And I said, I look all the time. I'm looking all the time. I just, uh, right now, somebody, uh, we had somebody pray with us the other day about, it, about the building. And they said, God's not hiding it from you. He's hiding it for you. I'll go with that. Hallelujah. Amen. He got it hidden for us. Hallelujah. And uh, we'll go whatever way the Lord directs us. Um, amen. Hallelujah. All right. You ready? So don't forget, we give the missions. We give the building fund. We give the, your general tithe and offering to the local church. Uh, we, we do need to continue taking care of the local church. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you the people are blessed. We thank you the heaven's windows are open unto them. And you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, don't forget our Wednesday night uh, midweek service. And then don't, also don't forget our Tuesday prayer time. Uh, if you're interested in being a part of that, uh, you can just email the office your, um, your cell phone number. And we'll send you out a Zoom invite. Hallelujah. And you can get invited to our service, uh, our prayer time. Um, we decided to do it that way instead of just making it open, you know, that anybody on the planet can come join you because you never know who's going to join you. And I'll tell you, there's some people out there that do, do stuff that, you know, especially in a Zoom meeting where you've got two-way communication. Um, you don't want to have to be in the middle of your uh, prayer time and blocking people. You can, get, you can get some crazy manic out there. You know, like Jerry Savelle said one time, I was in a meeting with him years ago, and he said, let's face it, folks, there are some squirrels in the camp. Yep, yep, there are. And, and you think they were then, y'all see them now. Hallelujah. And then I, I've often preached about granola Christians, fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. Hallelujah. We have them. Glory to God. So we, um, we, we try to avoid disruption by the granolas children's church you guys are dismissed hallelujah hallelujah so that's tuesday nights but um, we'll we'll send you an invite if you want to be a part of that office at fvc.org uh, you can send your text say i want to be part of the prayer time and we will uh, add you to the zoom invite list is that not right zoom invite person Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, glory to God. So, uh, we are teaching and ministering on the subject of how to be led by the Spirit of God. We've spent our first part of this talking along the lines of the human spirit, making, making us aware that we are a triune being. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul, and he lives in a body. Uh, we do know that you exist with or without the body. To be absent from the body for the believer, the Bible says the writing of the believer, says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So we, we exist without the body. We are not complete, which is why at the return of Jesus, when the um, rapture of the church takes place, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, we which, are, we which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. And we know from Jesus, when he's talking about people being asleep, talking about being dead, Hallelujah. But the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. And then this corruptible shall put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall put on the immortality, because it will be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. <coughs> and so we gain <coughs> at that moment, that time, our glorified bodies, which will then be uh, an everlasting body that will not fade away, 
won't get old, won't wear out. Hallelujah. <coughs> Glory to God. So, but um, you do exist with or without the body. Remember Paul said, he, was, he knew a man about 14 years ago, such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Remember that? Most scholars believe that's when he um, was stoned and left for dead and actually died, went to heaven, hurt the unlawful th things unlawful to be uttered, and was sent back to finish his mission. Okay? Um, and and I, I, I concur with that, that, that view of that. Um, and he spent the rest of his ministry uh, unveiling the things he heard in heaven through the, what we refer to as the Pauline Revelation who we are in Christ, the born-again man, what it means to be alive unto God. Hallelujah. What, what a beautiful thing to be born again, to be born from death unto life. Hallelujah. To take on the nature of the Father. Praise God. Okay? And so we've been talking along the lines of the, man, the spirit of man, that we are a spirit. We possess a soul, live in a body. And we did this because God does not commune with you through your head. Remember, Jesus said, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hello. Y'all hear you going home. Are you drinking Starbucks on the front row of my church? Is that Starbucks? And you didn't bring me a white chocolate mocha decaf with half the pumps and whip. I'm sorry, church. I'm just uh, out there, guys. I'm just amazed that I didn't get a white chocolate vente, white chocolate mocha decaf with half the pumps and whip. See, you go get ready and to go to church, and they all sit at the table and order Starbucks. Thank you, Cap. Nathan, did you have one? His mommy got one? Are y'all upset, church? We all got left out. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anyway, God does not commune with you with your body. He communes with you in your spirit. And if you're going to be led by the Spirit of God, we have to be, we talked about, you've got to become spirit conscious so that you can be aware of God's dealing with your spirit. Now, you know, I grew up classical Pentecostal, and we loved goosebumps. We loved the chill, the thrill of the chill. Woo! The Holy Ghost is here. Because we got a goosebump. Hello? Well, I love the manifestation of the Spirit that gets on your flesh. But I am telling you, you've got to learn to be aware of God if your flesh is like zombied. Hello. I mean, because you can't use your flesh to be uh, your guide as to whether God's moving or not. I've been in services. Brother Hagin used to say this. He said, I've been in services where I preached. I felt about as anointed as a wet dish rag. And some of the best, and I've had the same thing happen over the time. I'll be honest with you. You preach a sermon, and you feel like, if I could just go home and get in the bed and pull the sheets up over my head, that'd be better than what I'm doing right now. And people walk out the door, Pastor, that's the best sermon you preached in six weeks. And you're thinking, my God, how in the, I felt like, bleh. You can't go by your feelings. You can't go by how your flesh is. Your flesh can just be feeling yucky because it, it dug too much of a trench yesterday. Isn't that right, Dennis? Nathan. They were digging a French drain yesterday. Yeah. Dennis came walking up to, for lunch today. looked like John Wayne. <laughs> Let me tell you, Pilgrim. <laughs> yeah. Well, your flesh, you know, your flesh can be in, in somewhat of a depressed state just because of food, lack of food, all kinds of things that we can't judge what God's doing by how your flesh feels. Some of y'all remember 
or should at least have heard the song by David Ingham was called Don't Shout Me Down Just Because I'm Preaching Good. Hello. You know? And there was a woman, he tells the story in one of his sermons about a woman that somebody had come through the church and laid hands on and gave her the, the uh, rocking anointing. And said, so well, Brother Hagin came to preach in the church. She came and says, now don't you worry. You just sit there and watch me. If I'm a rocking, you're in the spirit. If I'm not, then you're not. Hello. Brother Hagin looked down and said, sister, that's what I call laying empty hands on empty heads. <laughs> they imparted this gift of rocking to her. You wonder why some folks think us charismatics are crazy. Well, there you go. That, that helps them. In the song, he said, Brother, you know, this devil saying, Brother Hagin used to have, if all their brains were dynamite exploded, it wouldn't be enough to blow their nose. <laughs> oh, my. See, we get people who sit at church services and, I don't feel anything. Because they're flesh, see? And then you got another person to, uh, just a little bit away from them, and they're getting blessed, getting revelation, because they've tuned into the Spirit. So let's be Spirit conscious, okay? Aware. Learn to be listening to the inner man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, so let's talk about, we, 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 moving on now, the way to be led by the Spirit of God. Now, there are, there are, new, there are several ways. We're going to talk about the top three, the main ones. <clears throat> okay, we'll discuss in, in lightly some of the others. Hallelujah. Number one, everybody say number one. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit. We refer to this as the inward witness. The inward witness. Paul writes in Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 16, it says, The Spirit, now King James uses the word itself, and that is just simply because in the Greek language, the, the pronoun that followed the noun had to be the same gender, and the word pneuma is genderless. But I change it to it himself, because it the, the Holy Spirit is a he. It's referred to in the comforter as a he, all right? But the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Notice he doesn't bear witness with your flesh. He doesn't bear witness with your mind. He bears witness with with your spirit that you are the children of God. Your spirit has a witness or a knowing. Hello. In the New Testament, we're led not by the prophets. So can we, can we turn the house speakers down a little bit? They're, they're bouncing off that really bad. Um, but not by the prophets, but by our spirit. The spirit of God leads us in our spirit. Now in the Old Testament, only the prophet, the priest, and the king had the Holy Ghost on them. Huh? You need it up. All right, keep it up. We'll just, I'll listen to the bounce. Hallelujah. In the, New, in the Old Testament, only the prophet, priest, and king had the anointing, and they were led by all kinds of sign, prophets, you know, saying, you know, you're going to go over here and do this. Or they, they cast the, uh, the, uh, the stones. They had all kinds of ways. They were led because God couldn't speak to their spirits. But in the New Testament, you're born again. On us, he's in us. Yeah. Glory to God. I said, we don't just get the Holy Ghost on us. He's in us. You don't need a prophet to give you a word to know to go to work tomorrow. We got people sitting around all the time waiting for a prophet to give them a word. They'll call them up in the middle of the night. Brother so-and-so, what's the word? Well, listen, I'm not mocking the gifts of the Spirit. I believe in them. I flow in them. I operate in them. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in the demonstration of the Spirit. <clears throat> but let's not take things that the Bible doesn't teach us to do and put them into practice because it feels good when we do it. When Janie and I first got set, let me, let me finish reading this, this, this um, here before I move on. Um, and in the New Testament, every believer has the Spirit of God within them. Guidance may come, but somebody may give you a word. But it comes to confirm, not direct. I tell people all the time, 
Somebody gave, you, somebody gave me a word. With the, did it bear witness with your spirit? Well, actually, I never thought about it before they prophesied it over me. I said, go put it on the shelf. Hello? You don't act on a word that someone gives you that it doesn't, you already have a bear the witness of, a witness of it in your spirit. Hello? Had a girl one time was in our church and um, she had been in East Carolina City, had gone to our, the church that we came out of in Greenville, and, but she was from his area, so she had come back here and started attending our church and went down to Florida where they're having all these prophets meetings. And this person gave her a, she brought me the prophecy she got. You're going to do this, you're going to travel here, you're going to travel here, you're going to do this, you're going to marry this person, they're going to do this. Again. And I stopped, I said, okay, okay. I said, let me ask you a question. Did any of that that they said, had that ever been in your heart before? They said, no, I never, th I never thought about that in my life. I said, then you need to take this and you need to go put it on the shelf. And unless God brings that to you and stirs that up in you, you don't act on that. They didn't like what I said. So they took the tape, got in their car, drove all the way to Greenville, made an appointment with the pastor of the church we came out of. Played it for them. Then as they, were, as they finished playing, they said, now I, I told, I could let Pastor Ed hear this. And he said, well, what did he say? He said, put it on the shelf, don't act on it, unless God bears witness my spirit. Sounds like it gave you good advice to me, good advice to me. She didn't like that. Had a woman call me up one time. On the phone. You got to watch them phone calls that come from people who, who, who are looking for something from, you know. Is this the pastor? Yes, yeah, the pastor. I got a problem. Okay, what's your problem? Well, I'm, I, I'm in a church, and God has shown me I'm going to marry a certain man. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, God showed me. Okay. So I start a questioner. You know, well, you know, what, what, are you, what are you looking for? I'm trying to find what they're looking for. You, got, you just can't, see, there, some folks just want you to confirm something. So they can go around and say, well, that pastor said by the word of the Lord. I'm not your Holy Ghost. And if the Spirit of God anoints me to say something, it's to bear witness what the Holy Ghost has already told you. And um, so I started questioning her a little bit. And Well, well have you guys ever talked? Well, no. Y'all ever been out on a date? Well, no. This goes on about 15 minutes and, and um. And I'm like, what, what in the world? But God showed her in a dream she's going to marry this man. And she let the cat out of the bag. Uh-huh. Because one of the questions I ask is, well, have you gone to your pastor and talked to him about this? I mean, why are you calling him dollar pastor? You go to your pastor. That's the man in the church. Well, I can't go to him. Uh, now listen, you may as well get El Toro out and get the red cape. When they say, I can't go to my pastor, there's a problem already. Hello? And uh, I said, why not? She said, well, the man I'm talking about is married. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't think about it. I, I mean, it just flew out of my mouth before I could stop it. I said, sister, you had too much pizza last night. I said, that was a pizza dream from indigestion. God hates divorce. Now, listen, we know people have been divorced. My parents were divorced. I know people have been, been divorced. I've, I've dealt with I've counseled people. It's, it's not the plan of God. But when it happens, it happens. We believe in restoring people too. Amen. But God's not going to divorce a man to give her to another woman. I mean, to another woman. That's not his plan. He's not going to come in and give Ellie a word so she can go marry somebody else. Hello. And uh, the conversation didn't last long after that. She was trying to find somebody in the phone book who would go, yeah, that's the Lord. Without having all the information so she could run back and be at liberty in her thinking 
to go after another woman's husband on a word from the Lord. That's not being led by the Spirit. That's being led by your old lusty flesh. Hello? As Medea would say, your old lusty nasty flesh. Are y'all here? You're going home. We do things under the guise of the Spirit of God that the Holy Ghost is a billion miles away from. That's why we have to be learned to be led by the Spirit and recognize the voice of the Spirit in our inner man versus the voice of our flesh so that we don't yield to the dictates and desires of the flesh over the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so the inward witness is not a voice, so to speak. It's a knowing. A knowing in your spirit. Let me say this. This is the number one way God leads you. I've had... I've had the, the next one, the, uh, you know, and I've had different means, God, different means God spoken to me. But the primary way God leads you is a knowing in your spirit. And see, I know something's coming for us as a church. I don't quite know what, when, where, how. Hello. But I know it. And every step we've been taking the past two years and two or three months, since the Lord spoke to me. And uh, now that was, that, was, that was more authoritative. And when we get to that, I talk about, you know, when, when I told you he spoke to me, he said, how much debt are you in? And I'm watching, the, I'm in the middle of a hurricane co- soccer, uh, a hockey game. Why are you bothering me? It's, it's after Christmas, on a week of vacation, and the Lord wants to talk to me. Yeah, the nerve. I'm sitting here wa- watching a hockey game, and he goes, no, how much debt are you in? Like, I want to think about how much debt I'm in. How much debt the church is in? And I said, I don't know. And went back to my hockey game. Well, he didn't leave it there. He came back and said, well, find out. Yes, sir. <laughs> he got my attention, okay? But that, that wasn't the knowing. That was more the, 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 the uh, almost the voice. It wasn't quite audible, but it was more the witness, uh, more of the, um, um, oh, gosh, Talking about the inward witness, and I'm jumping all around. That was, that was the inward voice. That's more authoritative than the inward witness. The inward witness, you're not really hearing words as much as a knowing. You have a sense. You know. Okay? Um, we can expect to be led by the Spirit. Romans 8, 14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You do not know that you're a child of God because you feel like it. How many have ever, ever woke up and felt unsaved? You ever had moments you felt, let me, now husbands and wife, husbands don't divide us with your wife. How many of you, don't raise your hand, do not raise your hand. Just look straight ahead. How many of you ever, ever woke up and felt unmarried? You don't look at your wife and go, honey, I don't feel married today. I'm going to go out and get me another woman because I don't feel married today. They were a good husband. I'm doing your eulogy next week. Hello? You can confess I'll live and not die all you want to. You're going to be a dead, you're, you're a goner. Because you could only sleep with one eye open but so long. Hello. Hallelujah. Um, you don't, you're not a child of God because you feel like it. Or you had a vision. You don't get visions, you're saved now. You know that you're a son of God because you had the witness of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness to you that you're a child of God. The primary way he leads us is through the witness of our, uh, of the Spirit. Amen? Glory to God. Now, let me say this. Again, growing up classical Pentecostal, we are not led by fleeces. I got born again, came, you know, got filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke with other tongues, turned on to Jesus. And I had grown up Pentecostal, it, you know, but I, and I had heard all my whole life. You know, I put a fleece before the Lord. Let me tell you what will happen a lot of times when you put a fleece out there. You'll get fleeced. Hello. What's a fleece? Well, it was an animal skin. And it was used in the Old Testament when um, in Judges, where they were going to, you know, obey the Lord. I I believe Gideon was going to obey the Lord, Judges 6. He says, behold, I put a fleece of wool on the floor. And when do be on the fleece only, it should be dry on the earth side. Uh, 
Besides, then I'll know that thou say, will save Israel by my hand, as thou said. He rose up the next morning, it was that way. Well, he wasn't happy. And so he said, let me, let me, don't, don't get mad with me. Let me put the fleece out there again. Make it wet everywhere else and keep the fleece dry. See, he was looking for an outward sign to confirm that God was leading him to do something. <clears throat> That's not, that was being led by fleeces. You know what? The devil can accommodate you, folks. I said, the devil can, can accommodate you. You have to know in your inner man that God's leading you and guiding you and not because you have some outward sign. Well, Lord, if that's really you, and you know it's him, that's why you're doing that because you didn't want to do what he told you to do. I can't find an avian corner anywhere on that one. Y'all got mighty quiet. Yeah. <clears throat> the Lord told you to do something and you didn't like it. So now I'm going to put a fleece before the Lord. Yeah. In hopes you'll get out of it. And, you, and, and you're doing that because you'll feel better. Yeah. Lord told you to give $500 to the building for the, to a person or to the church or something. Well, Lord, if that's you. You know what happened? Your old stinking stingy self rose up and didn't like the idea of giving $500 away. And so you're going to go fleece the Lord and hope he don't get, it don't come through. Now say, amen, ouch, or old me. You might even have to say, help me, Jesus. I, I, don't give me the church frame and walk out. All right? Yeah. A lot of people fleece because they're hoping that, that fleece don't happen and they can get out of it. And then they can just say, well, you know, I, I thought I was supposed to do such and such, but I put a fleece before the Lord and it didn't happen. Now, here's, here's what the term fleece means now in the modern church. In the Old Testament, it was literally, literally a fleece that Gideon used to put out there to, you know, test the Lord as to whether he was hearing from God or not. You remember Old Testament, not Old Testament, or New Testament, were led by the Spirit, not by the prophet, priest, or king. Amen. But it represents anything you put before the Lord that as a condition that he must do in order for you to believe it was him talking to you. Well, Lord, if you want me to start a church and such and such, have four people come by today and tell me, you're supposed to start a church. Now, let me say something. I can tell you, you either know you're hearing from God and you know God's leading you and guiding you to do something or you won't make it. Because if somebody gives you a word, if you put a fleece and the fleece happens, at the first sign of trouble, you're going to pack it in and be gone. I've seen too many people do too many things and say, the Lord told me to do such and such. And when they got in trouble, they packed it in and left. Hello? Now, I'm probably going to run all over the different ways to hear from God as I do this because I just run into these different, well, well, that's all right. We'll just clear it up in the middle. We'll sort it out later. How about that? When I, I came to Greensboro to take the church, Let me, let me, so let's go to the next one. The inner wit, the, um, the inner word voice, which is our conscious. It's actually the voice our, of our human spirit talking to us. Um, 1980. Oh gosh. 80, 88. February of 19, when were you born? 87. 1986, the, the February... February of 1986, March, February, March 8, 1986. Um, my church that I was in was a member of Faith Christian Fellowship, Buddy Harrison. My Buddy Harrison was Brother Hagen's son-in-law. And um, I was ordained with the FCF. My pastor was a regional director for, at that time, of the Faith, Faith, Faith Christian Fellowships in the Southeast. And um, I, I got a phone call on a, um, on a um, Friday. My pastor called saying, uh, Ed, uh, Brother Buddy just called. We got a church in Greensboro, and uh, the pastor is, um, is in Tulsa. He's, he's got cancer, and he's, he's, it's not a good situation. But he's in Tulsa. They're, trying, they're ministering to him. And they may need for you to be able to just pack up and go to Greensboro and preach on Sunday. 
So I'm just giving you a heads up so that at the last second you can get the car and drive to Greensboro. Because, uh, you know, Brother Buddy wanted me to go. <clears throat> and um, so I said, okay, I'll be ready. Actually, it wasn't on Friday. It was, on, it was earlier in the week. It was like a Tuesday. And so as any young minister who's not getting the preach often is doing, you're, you're, you're stealing away extra time to get ready because you, 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 don't, you don't have any of that time. You're working a full-time job. You're not, uh, you're not able to, you're not on a regular ministry basis. You might get minister here and there whenever the opportunity arises, but there are not many. But you're, you're, you're serving, being diligent, faithful to the Lord. And, uh, and so that week as I was praying, the Lord spoke to me. How did he speak to me? It wasn't an audible voice. It wasn't the, it wasn't the audible voice of God. But it was more than just an inward knowing. It was the voice of my spirit. It was, it was, like, it was more authoritative. So it was the, it was the conscience. It was the, in, it was the inward voice. And um, here's what I said. That pastor will die and you'll go to Greensboro and take that church. Now here's what I'm doing. I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. The Bible wants that man. God wants that man to live. He'll live and not die. I'm, I'm rebuking it. Remember, Jesus turned to Peter and said, get thee, you know, uh, get thee behind me. And then he told them that, um, you know, he'll, he'll tear his temple down and again, he'll raise it up in three days. And Peter came, not so, Lord. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Sometimes when God's speaking to us, we don't like the way he said. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Well, we're a word of faith that's always positive. <laughs> I've been in services where the, where, where, where Brother Hagin said, ere another year will come and go, and there will be those, those among us that will be absent. Not that they won't be in the meeting. They'll be absent from the earth. And then he said, it's because two of you are in adultery and one of them is something else. You know, and he says, now the Lord's given an opportunity. If you'll repent and turn and, and, and get that right, it won't happen that way. One of them did, the other two died. <clears throat> That ain't a hunky door one, is it, guys? Don't want to get up and go, Wow, the Lord spoke tonight. Come on now. It was just as much the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> he was trying to warn them, trying to stop them, and they didn't listen. So uh, I got called on, on um, Friday, and my pastor said, Look, that, that pastor, he, he, he didn't stay in Tulsa. He left. He went home, said he had to be with his sheep. He couldn't leave them unattended. You know, although he's dying, you know, they, and, and Brother Bill used to tell me later, he said, if I could have kept him there, I could have helped him. But he wouldn't stay because he, he had this kind of wrong idea about his role as the pastor, so much so that he would die rather than let them be without him for a weekend. Man, you know how much better it would have been if, you, if you'd lived and not ever, not ever died that way? And um, so I forgot about it. Well, here comes Bay. About the second week of May, I get a phone call. Ed, uh, we need for you to um, um, be ready to go to Greensboro. Um, that pastor died. And now, I don't tell anybody what I heard back in February. Folks, when you're being led by the Spirit, you don't have to say everything you hear. You don't need to go out and try to get other people's confirmation. You don't need their input. Because some bozo will talk you out of it. We used to have, this, there was somebody in our church, this church, when we first came here, that, you know, was going to give his testimony. He saw Jesus appear to him. Well, come to find out after talking to some people, he used to tell everybody that an angel appeared to him, but one of the real flaky people in the church, and I'm talking, he didn't have fruits, nuts, and flakes in the box. He, he was the fruit, nut, and flake of the box. Say, that wasn't an angel, it was Jesus. Man, I'm going to tell you something. If Jesus appears to you, you don't need anybody to tell you it was Jesus. <laughs> Hello. I'm just honest with you. I said, if Jesus appears to you, you don't need somebody to tell you it was Jesus. <sighs> so he changed his testament and Jesus appeared to him. Ooh, we had some fun back when we first came. Anyway. But they'll talk you out of stuff. They'll, they'll, oh, that's not the Lord. That's, oh, yeah. You know. you, so you, when, when God's leading you, sometimes you just got to keep it inside. Remember, Mary pondered all those things in her heart. Amen. And um, so, the, so the first week, 
uh, somebody from FCF in Tulsa, uh, I believe Bob Boos came in, and then I came the following week, and then the next week, um, Tom Arnold came from Tulsa. And then after that, I came every weekend from then on until they actually uh, nominated Baby the pastor in September that year. Now, I still hadn't told anybody what the Lord told me in February. We go through the whole summer. I, dry, I work at the church in, in Greenville on Monday through Thursday. I have Thursday or, or Tuesday through Friday. I have Monday off because I'm traveling back from Greensboro because I'm driving to Greensboro on Fridays, preaching on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and driving back on Mondays. Okay? For, for, did it for several months. Even went on vacation. We drove to Greensboro, preached, did our services on Sunday morning, Sunday night, got in the car, went to the mountains, came back through on Saturday night, preached Sunday morning, Sunday night, went back to Greenville. And that's how, you know, that's how it was going. Jesse was knocking my, my 35 millimeter camera off of the hotel shelf. Yeah, bull. <laughs> I think she busted something. Maybe about one of my lens or something, my big one. Anyway. And so we're doing that. We're doing that. We get into February. I mean, April, August, middle, middle of August. And my pastor gets me and says, Ed, we need to talk. Because he's always got on somebody to take my place. I'm the assistant pastor of the church. He's already asking somebody else to, to fill my, I'm not even out the door yet. I said, yeah, well, what, what is it? He said, well, Brother Buddy's talked to me. And, um, and, and, and I've talked with him, and we're talking. And uh, what are you going to do about that church in Greensboro? I said, well, Pastor, I've known since February I was supposed to take it. The man died in March, in May. And he kind of went, why didn't you say anything? I said, I was just walking it out. He said, well, but a buddy says you, he believes you're supposed to take it. And I do too. I said, well, I know I'm supposed to take the church. But I just had to walk it out and let it, let it prove itself out without me. Because see, I come walking in day one and go, well, can you imagine the man's just died and I get in here and come into the church and preach and go, well, you know, the Lord showed me in February your pastor was going to die and I'm supposed to take the church. Do you think that would have went over? Mm -mm. See, we gotta, when, we, we, when you're being led by the Spirit, you don't have to try to get man's accolades and affirmation to make it happen. You just walk it out. Amen. So by the time it got there, they were, they had, they were already ready for me to come be the pastor. Most of them. Some of them weren't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You run into that, but that, that's, that's in any case like that. You know. Hallelujah. And so, we took the church in September of that year. But I knew in February. Because God had spoken to me and told me. Now, he, I didn't, it wasn't like, Ed, you shall take the church. Wouldn't that be cool? Kind of had the Moses and the Ten Commandments, you know, movie. Thou shalt take the church. <laughs> Boy, that would be great, wouldn't it? Then we wouldn't, then we wouldn't have to go through this process of, of actually finding out if God's talking to us. You know, have it written in stone by the hand of God. You're not going to get that, folks. That's not how God's going to lead you around. He's going to put the knowing in there. Then he's got the voice of your conscience. Paul says in that Romans 9, when I say the truth in Christ, I lie not my conscience, also bear me witness. Now the difference between the inward witness and the voice of the Spirit is um, the inward witness is a knowing, an unction. Basically just on the inside you kind of know. This voice, the Spirit of man has a voice. And it speaks. That voice is known as the conscience. Let me say this. If you're not saved, your conscience is terrible as a God. Only a born-again man's conscience is a good God. Okay? Paul says in Acts 23.1, uh, I, or Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I've lived in all good conscience before God this day. It's a good God if you're born again. If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away, all things became new. Hallelujah. 
Paul, I mean, John writes in 1 John 5, 13, these things have I written unto you, that you may believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may believe in the name of the Son of God. We have eternal life in us now, therefore our spirits are alive unto God, and the voice of our spirit, the conscience, is a good God. Hello. How do you do? Well, God on the inside. John 14, 23 says, Jesus said, if a man love me, he'll keep my words. You see, you'll begin to measure what you're hearing according to the word of God. Now, Pizza Dream Girl. Y'all remember her? Talked about her a few minutes ago. Pizza Dream Girl. She had too much pizza because she wanted to marry the man in the church that uh, had never talked to her. And she found that the cat out of bed. The reason she couldn't talk to him about uh, God showing her she was going to marry him was because he was married. Remember Pizza Dream Girl? Well, if she had known the Word of God, she would have known God wasn't in that. Would she? So when that voice came, her spirit would have gone, no, that's not Bible. But we live in a feel-good society. We live with theme songs like, if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. There's a road on the distant shore. Hey, anyway, y'all remember that song? Who let Jeff in? Yeah, that song is the epitome of situational ethics. You can't be with the one you love, just love the one you're with. You know, if your main squeeze ain't there, squeeze on somebody else. That ain't Bible. But that is our society. I feel like a girl, so I'm going to be a girl. Now people say, well, what's wrong with it? People just got to be who they are. The Bible says if a man wears that which pertains to a woman, it's an abomination. Now we got some yo-yo up there for healthy human services running around in little girl doll dresses. Have you seen that picture? With his pager on the side and his little tights like a little girl and the short, fluffy short, um, Shirley Temple dress. And it's a man. And everybody, everybody goes, that's normal. That's not normal. If y'all watch Young Frankenstein, Mel, uh, Mel Brooks is Young Frankenstein. He got the Abbey normal brain. Y'all remember that one? What, what brain did you get? Uh, Abbey? Abbey who? Abbey normal. We're living where everybody caters and maintains, you know, what your flesh says, what your flesh desires, what your flesh wants. And yet God wants to lead us by our spirit. And when you're led by your spirit, you're going to be in the Word of God. And your Word of God when, when God speaks to you and you have your conscience involved and He's talking to you, you're going to measure those things against the Word of God. So when something comes floating by you and goes, you're a girl, but you're a boy, you go, no, that's of the devil. Bind you, devil, in Jesus' name. Amen. People say, well, God led me to love another man, and I'm a man. No, he didn't. I said, no, he didn't. If you lie, a man lies with a man as he does with a woman, it's an abomination to be put to death. Well, that's Old Testament. Yeah, but the principle is still the same. It is displeases God. It's dishonorable to God. Hello. God created male and female, created he them. A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. So you're, you're preach, hate preaching. No, I'm not. You will go to hell living in sin. You don't have to. You can be delivered and go to heaven. I love you enough to tell you the truth instead of lying to you and sending you to hell. And when we both get there, go, well, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Well, thanks, pal. Y'all feel so enthusiastic. But God's on the inside. And so either you're going to get the inner knowing, or in the case of me coming to Greensboro, the inner witness, now, uh, or the inner voice. And let me say this. Had it not been 
for the fact that I knew <coughs> God spoke to me. I'd been gone a long time ago. I would have packed it up and left. Because we've run into trouble. We've run into difficult times. We've faced obstacles. I believe, as Pastor says, obstacles. Is that right? Yeah, obstacles. Got them obstacles in your life. I even had ministry friends who I love to this day and would let them in this pulpit at any time. But tell me, uh, Pastor Ed, if I'd gone through the things you've gone through here, I'd left a long time ago. Well, don't think I didn't want to. Hello. But God, the God who said go, did not say leave. And I don't go to him every other week saying, can I? Huh? Please, can I? Can I? Huh? No. Here's my philosophy. When he speaks, you stay with it until he shows up and says something different. And if he never shows up and says something different, you keep doing what he said to do. Well, yeah, but you could, you could go somewhere else. And you could have a big church. You could put your name out there. And as long as you've been in the ministry, you know, some churches would hire you. You'd have, you'd have a big church and have a big salary. Your wife wouldn't have to teach school. You wouldn't have to be working at the school system to... You know, so you could keep preaching? See, all that could come. The devil break. But God said, go there. I have to obey God. Whether it's comfortable or not, I have to obey God. And even if my flesh wants to pack it up and leave. Listen, when people you've loved on and done the most for and invested your life in, turn on you like, I mean, poison. And do everything they can to destroy you. We've had them try to destroy us. People come to us and say, come to my wife and say, uh, we want to be a blessing to you and come to your house and help clean your house and do stuff, you know, clean, mop the floors and vacuum the house and all this kind of stuff for you because we just want to bless you. And then they get upset with the church and they run around and say, she sat down, watched us clean, did not do a thing to help us. Did you want to jack slap them? It took everything I had of me not to nail them to a wall. And jack slap them. Yeah. One minute that we want to be a blessing. Next minute, that lazy woman sat there and watched us clean the house and didn't do a thing. Well, don't offer. Now, and I, this is probably bad on our part, but no one's come to clean our house since. We won't let them. My wife has no interest in anybody. Why? Why? She's not going to let it come back on her. Absolutely. It ain't coming back on us. We'll just, do, we'll just take care of ourselves. Because it, we, that we, it's, it's, too, it's, too, it's actually too hurtful. But God said, come to Greensboro. He said that I would take that church. And then he had the vision. He had the vision in the spring of 88. Mark Brzee was here. No, um, Mark Brzee wasn't here. Joe Morris had a, had a friend of Ed Dufresne who came in. And that guy, he was here. And um, my, my friend Joe Morris who had worked for Ed Dufresne. And uh, <clears throat> he had this friend, Ed Dufresne had this friend, who, who, and Ed Dufresne recommended him come to our church. And while he was here, I was sitting on the edge of the platform. Not, it was in the building we were downtown. And I had that vision of the city of Greensboro and the, the Lord holding it up to the heavens and the light coming down out of heaven and the revival starting. <coughs> we haven't seen it. <clears throat> well, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. 
When God said to Abraham, I'll make you the father of many nations, it was 25 years later before Isaac was born. And he tried, and if you get smart, you're not trying to help the Lord out with your Ishmael's. Because they can be a lasting problem. Hello? They can last for centuries. Or even to the present day. I mean, a little roll in the tent and we got trouble sealed. See, that was what Abraham listened to his flesh. Sarah comes and said, take my hand. And he said, all right, baby. And it's, it's typical. When the woman got pregnant, Sarah's ticked off. Remember? She puts her out. Get out of here. But you, but you told me I could. Well, I changed my mind. Out! Abraham's probably going around women. That's right. You told me I could. Yeah, but you were supposed to say no. And he was. Hello? He was supposed to say no. The Bible says that we are the temple of the living God for 2 Corinthians 6, 16. God says, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. The Holy Ghost is a residence on the inside of you. As your spirit listens to the spirit of the Lord, to God, learn to listen to the voice of your spirit and he will speak to you. And you'll make good decisions. And you'll follow the right path. Hallelujah. Circumstances can't govern us. Hello. What are some hindrances to hearing the voice? A seared conscience. Hello. I did not say Siri conscience. I said seared. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. If your conscience becomes seared, how do we sear our conscience? We override the voice of God. We get people to follow up and give us fleeces or give us word. <coughs> or worse yet, you go get your unsaved bozo friends to give you counsel. Women and men, but mainly women. Women do this more than men do. Men, men have marriage problems. They don't go talk to anybody. Women, they go to their friends. Well, I'll tell you what I would do, honey. Shut the door and leave. Because what's about to follow next ain't God. You're going to get the cultural response. Redneck or diary of a bad black woman. One of the two. And ain't neither one of them going to help you. Are you here? Medea is funny, but you do not take care of your problems with a chainsaw. Y'all seen that one? Eee, cuts the couch in half. That's the diary of a mad black woman. I mean, you're rolling the floor laughing, but that's not your counsel. <coughs> and you'll go get that loud mouth friend. You know, the one that's married four times and got six, six live in with her now. And she's going to help you with your marriage. Hello. Come on. Now, you need the wisdom and counsel of the Holy Ghost. I remember Helen Locust. She went, they went to Greenwood the year before I did, her and, her and Larry. And they had come out to Greenwood and we were at Faith and Victory when we went there. When I got out of Greenwood, Janie had started slipping over from our Pentecostal church over to Faith and Victory Church because it was a charismatic word of faith preach, you know, Brother Hagen, Brother Copeland, I mean, we were, you know, in the, in the uh, denomination at my time, my denomination sent out letters to the pastor saying not to preach Copeland or Hagen in the churches. 
keep it out. And I just graduated from Rhema. How am I going to do anything in this denomination? And they don't want Hagen or Copeland preached. Hello. So we went over there, went to, you know, went to that church, got married, went over to that church. Came forward. But Helen and Larry Locust were there. Now, she would testify how, you know, Larry, Papa was a rolling stone. Some of y'all remember that song? Who remembers Papa was a rolling stone? Okay, who never heard it before? It's on YouTube, look it up. It'll make sense to you. Okay? Kind of like Medea, uh, Meet the Browns. My daddy won't know Rolling Stone. I mean, my, my daddy won't know. He was a good man. There your papa. Your daddy was a Rolling Stone. What about Sosa? She was a, one of his hoes. Y'all remember that? That, that, that scene's the one that put me in the floor laughing so hard I couldn't breathe. Papa was a Rolling Stone. But Larry was a Rolling Stone. He'd go out and be gone all night. And Helen's sitting there at the house. <clears throat> Now, she had gone to her friend. i tell you what I'd do. I'd get some hot grease and pour it down his pants when he comes in. You got all kinds of stuff people do. And counsel other people to do. <clears throat> well, she went to the Lord. He gave her different than hot grease. He said, yeah, heat the frying pan up, but cook him food. He'd walk in at 4 o'clock in the morning. She'd have a hot meal sitting there on the table waiting for him. And she kept doing that and doing that until it broke him. And he came back, got right with God, served the Lord, saved their marriage. They went into the ministry together and pastored a church for a number of years until he went home to be with the Lord. Now, how much better was that than hot grease? Hello? People's lives were blessed. People's lives were touched. People's lives were changed because she fought for her marriage following the instruction of the Lord instead of her buddies. And got him right with God, and he became a great blessing in the kingdom of God. There's always hope. I said there's always hope. Amen? Now, their church still goes. She pastors the church now that he's gone home. She, she still runs the church. I went and preached for him a, years, a few years ago um, um, after Brother Larry had passed. <clears throat> she had me come. And... Um, just wonderful people. Loved them. Loved Brother Larry and Sister Helen. But she loved him back because that's what the Lord said to do. She knew in her heart what to do. See, she was being led by the, the Spirit, which was leading according to the Word of God, and not by her buddies who would let him go to hell and missed all those people they ended up having an opportunity to minister to and to bless. Amen. The, and see, that, that effect carries more than just one place. And there you have a place where being led by the Spirit ended up turning into a tremendous... Yeah, she, did she have to put her flesh under? Yeah. What woman likes to have the idea that her husband's running around with another man? I mean, another, well, another man or another woman. I've had both happen, happen in the church. Woman, come, wife came to me one time, her husband ran around with men. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah. They've now changed their name. They, they divorced. He, he's now changed his name. He wouldn't listen. Wouldn't back up. Wouldn't change. Yeah. But nobody, you know, do, do your, does your flesh have to deal with some stuff that you better believe it? Your flesh goes crazy. Because it's embarrassing. It's hurtful. Your pride's injured. All kinds of things happen in that kind of situation. Now, you're going to listen to God or listen to your flesh? Well, sometimes you can't fix it. But in the, you, you, you follow God. In the case where they did fix it, 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 it helps. A lot of people get saved. A lot of people get filled with the Spirit. A lot of people get blessed, healed. A lot of people turn, you know, serving God because, because she didn't listen to her flesh. She listened to her spirit. Amen. I said Amen. Hallelujah. Um, feeling is the voice of your body. Yeah. Reason is the voice of your mind, and conscience is the voice of your spirit. If you go by your feelings, you will never follow God. Amen? You will never follow God listening to the voice of your, of your flesh, your feelings. Because it's contrary to your flesh. 
Amen. Well, anybody get anything out of this? <clears throat> anybody want to? Do anybody want to slip out and leave during this? Well, it's good. Don't we? Anybody gonna go buy me a Starbucks real quick? Janice, you gonna get me one? Yeah, I, yeah no, I know you would, Janice. There's Janice. If you want me to get, it, I'll go get it. She gonna put a fleece out there first. Lord, the pastor's hearing from you. <laughs> I'm teasing. Hallelujah. All right. Let's all stand up. Father, we thank you for this time together. We bless the people in Jesus' mighty name. May they be blessed in everything they do. May they learn day by day, clearer and clearer, learn how to be led by the Spirit of God and know your voice and know how, to be, how, how they're following after you is right and upright and they're being a blessing on the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. God bless you. And those watching by the internet, thank you for joining us today. Remember these words in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. See you next time here, Faith and Victory Church, online. Hallelujah.